city of Honolulu, Hawaii has turned to Cisco for a massive technology infrastructure overhaul. Here's the story. Hi, TC Doyle again reporting for Cisco. Hey, we're in Honolulu, Hawaii. We're going in to meet the mayor, Mufi Hanneman, to talk about his new 3500 installation of Cisco IP phones and other technology infrastructure that he is and his administration have put in place. Very exciting story. Check it out. It seems to me that the, the, the mayor has to be very much involved and concerned about, number one, customer satisfaction and service. I mean, that's what we do. I eschew answering machines during regular business hours. I always tell our people, you got to get somebody on the other end of the phone. But at the end of the day, you also have to make sure the communication system is such that people are not waiting uh, for an answer or they can go online quickly and get that information uh, to be able to do what they need to do. Uh, secondly, uh, it's public safety, uh, and that to me is all about ensuring the safety and security of visitors and residents. We're so dependent on tourism. If people don't believe that Hawaii is a safe place to visit, they will not come. If our residents don't feel that it's a safe and secure place to invest in business, they won't start businesses, they won't create employment opportunities. So that's very important. And last but not least, to link the two together, you need a communication system where you can communicate with each other freely uh, and do it in such a way where the work gets done, also in terms of your outreach to the public. And thirdly, in the case of a natural disaster or man-made disaster, you better have interoperability across the board, which is why that was the first thing that I asked Gordon Bruce and the Department of Information Technology to do, was take a page of what happened in New York with 9-11 and make sure that if it happens during our watch, we're not going to fall victim, that the police can't talk to the fire, fire can't talk to the emergency medical services, that they can all talk. Then we added another component to it, every mayor can identify with us, and that's pothole repair. So now we have a pothole hotline and a pothole link that people can go online and know where all the potholes that are being prepared. And they can anticipate how long it's gonna take, and also they can complain, put one in. So you can do it on the phone, you can do it on the website. Uh, so those are two new features as a result. And we also experienced dramatic increase in customer satisfaction, the Department of Planning and Permitting, and the Department of uh, Customer Services. Customer Services where we do driver's licensing and motor vehicle registration. We're the only county in America that does driver licensing at the county level. And so we've had to also uh, basically fulfill the mantra I laid out, which we want people to spend more time going online than standing in line. With our Department of Planning and Permitting, uh, with the number of construction projects uh, that are going forward, we've streamlined that considerably, not just by the greater customer service, but also the capabilities of putting most of that stuff now online. We're sitting in the hybrid Toyota Prius of Texar, Gordon Bruce. Gordon, <laughs> thanks so much for the time. My pleasure, my pleasure. You're the CIO of Hawaii, or excuse me, of Honolulu. Uh, tell us a little bit about the first day you walked in and found your tech support hotline to IBM. What was that? Oh, my first day on the job, I'm doing a tour of the data center and I see this phone on the desk. I ask what it's for and they say, it's what we used to call IBM when we have problems. And it was a rotary phone. I couldn't believe it. I didn't know anyone still had them around. So that was it. That was the, the sign of the times. And then I go to my office and find two phones on my desk, a uh, Cisco voice over IP phone and another PBX analog phone. I said, what's this? Oh, we're testing Cisco. I said, well, that's good. How's it going? They said, not too bad. I said, how long have you been doing this? I think we're coming up on our third year. <laughs> I unplugged the analog phone, took it outside, dropped it in the garbage can and told my uh, staff that they will be up on Cisco within 60 days. And they were. <laughs> Congratulations on that executive decision making on your part. Uh, you guys have done some extraordinary things over the last three years uh, since the administration first kicked into gear. Kind of recap some of the highlights of what you've done. Uh, major areas of, of accomplishment in the areas of public safety, first and foremost, interoperable communications across all first responder agencies, but not only police, fire, and EMS, we now have interoperable communications across all branches of the military, over 20 different first responders agencies, including Army, Air Force, Marines, Coast Guard, the uh, State Sheriff's Office, uh, and numerous others, Federal Fire, they're all part of our 
interoperable communication systems. In addition to that, we've gone to a gigabit ethernet network around the entire island, upgraded that entirely. Um, it's redundant and also backed up by a microwave system. 